Hey, Divine Ones. Welcome. I'm Jerome Braggs, and welcome to another episode of my Face Sunday Facebook Live show. Um, today, I'm really excited because we're going to go deep into talking about something that a lot of you all ask a lot about, um, and which is really at the core of my work. So I'm really excited about today because it was at the core of my own journey. But we're going to be talking a little bit about um, unhealed trauma as the root of disease. And... Um, how to understand uh, the, the role emotional trauma plays in the creation and manifestation of diseases in our bodies and the role healing that trauma has in the creation of healing and wellness in our bodies. Um, so I'm glad you all are tuning in. As always, if you're watching live and you have questions, please um, put your questions in the comments. I'll get to those questions um, at a point later in this video today. Uh, if you're watching the replay and you have questions, please submit your questions as well, um, because those questions um, really inspire me to make other videos. They inspire me to create classes and workshops, and I try to address the questions um, that come in, whether I do them in a video or uh, in a post on my page or something like that. So I try not to let your questions go unanswered. I do have a lot of them. <laughs> so if your question hasn't been answered yet, if you haven't seen me respond to your question yet, please know I have not ignored it. I'm just trying to get around to it. There's a lot of questions that come in. So I try to get to them uh, in a timely fashion that also allows me to honor my energy and honor my internal resources and what I can actually do. So um, having said all of that, uh, welcome you all. I love that you're here. I love that we share this time together on Sundays. Um, as always, Sundays are one of my favorite days to really charge, recharge myself, express myself, and love on myself a bit. And, and being with you in this way and doing live videos is one of the, my favorite ways to do that. So um, I'm very excited to be here. So I want to share a little bit, just start a little bit in talking about um, unhealed emotional trauma as the root of all disease. So if you've been watching me for a while, you know that I talk about that all dysfunction and disease arises in us and our dysfunction arises in our lives and illness or disease arises in our bodies when we've, when, when we've been withholding ourselves from the vibration of love for too long. Um, not necessarily when you've just been withholding yourself from the vibration of love for, you know, a few minutes or even a few hours. But when you have a habit, when you've been chronically withholding um, yourself, which means you've not been embodying the vibration of love for a long time, um, that's when dysfunction starts to arise in our lives. And that's when illness starts to arise in our bodies, because the vibration of love is not only is it the energy of our true selves, but it's the energy that makes things work well. It is literally the energy that makes the universe move. It is literally the energy that is the core of all things that are created. And it makes things work well. So when we're not in alignment with that, when we're not embodying that energy, it can things cannot work in our lives and our bodies were created uh, when our souls were intending to come into physical form into this human body. Our body was literally created to house the vibration of love because that's the vibration of who we are. So the body is created to house the energy of our soul and our soul is literally the vibration of love. So when we don't have that, when we're withholding ourselves from that energy, in some form or fashion when we're um, and we're, I'm going to talk a lot about that today, like how you do you withhold yourself from love, the energy of love? What are the ways that you do that? But when we withhold ourselves from the energy of love in some way, we are literally not giving our bodies the energy that it needs to stay well and to be healthy and to work at its best. And when we do that for a long time, that's when illnesses and diseases show up. And the illness and disease, if you watch my last video that I did, you can go on my YouTube channel, you can go on my page and watch the last live video because we talked a lot about this. Um, disease is not a punishment and it's not a betrayal of your body. It's just a reflection and an indicator that you're low on the vibration of love. Some people call it the life force energy, but you're low on that energy. Just like the indicator on your car that says you're low on gas and the gas light comes up and it's not that indicator, that gas light coming on is not saying you've done anything wrong. It's not saying your car is betraying you. It's just saying, hey, your car is running very low on the fuel that it needs to run. And if you don't put 
um, if you don't stop and recharge your car with the fuel that it needs, which is in the, in the car case is gasoline, if you don't put more gasoline in this car, it's going to stop and break down. Same thing with the body. When illnesses show up and diseases show up in our bodies, they're, they're indicators that we've been withholding ourselves from love for too long. We've, we've been with, the body is low on the fuel that it needs to, to run well, which is love energy. Um, and we need to stop our lives. We need to stop what we're doing. Stop either how we're thinking, stop making the choices we're making, stop the way we're living our life, our lifestyle. We need to stop and, ch and make a change so that we fuel love energy in us instead of drain it from us. So, um, one of the main ways, right, that we withhold energy, we withhold the energy of love from ourselves in our lives is when we have unhealed trauma. And actually disease really, all disease really comes from, um, the root cause of it is a trauma, an emotional trauma we have that's been unhealed. And I want to talk a little bit about that, about why that is, why emotional trauma is the root cause. So when you understand, the first thing we need to understand in this conversation today is that, again, disease is really that we've been withholding ourselves from love for too long, the energy of love. And you're not doing it intentionally. No one would intentionally um, withhold themselves from love when they understand that love, the energy of love is what we need to survive. The vibration of love is who we are and it's what makes your body work, work well. Like we're not really taught that in school. We're not taught that in our dominant institutions, our churches, our religions, things like that. We're not really taught how our reality actually works and how our bodies actually work. We're not taught that. And this is a big part that we're not taught, especially in the West, because we really don't even have a word to describe love energy, love vibration, right? So we have to make up words to try to describe it like life force energy. And like in some cultures, they have like the word chi, which is which means life force energy and prana which means life force energy in the other cultures, especially in the East, they have words for that. And why I'm saying this is it's really important because when you don't have a word for something in your language, when there's no word for it in your language, it means that it hasn't, it's not important enough. It's not something that has been talked about and it's not centralized and focused in your culture. So when you don't have a word for it, you don't talk about it. You don't have focus about it. You don't have any learnings or any education around that particular thing. So this particular aspect has been um, denied and our understanding about it has been so denied in our culture for a very long time, which is why so many of us don't understand what, how our health, uh, the health of our body actually works and what to do to keep ourselves healthy and what to do when we're, when we're actually ill and um, not just have a cold, right? Because those things are easy to, to realign and readjust. But when you have a chronic illness or a chronic disease, we don't really have an understanding about how to heal ourselves from that. And we believe that our culture believes that that's not possible, but all things are possible. And especially the body is not betraying you and it's not broken. It's literally just low on fuel. And when we understand that, and when we have conversations around that and educations more around that, then we will see more people healing themselves and we'll see more people being well, right? Instead of, instead of having a culture that drains, like our, a dominant culture really is about draining love energy from us, keeping ourselves from love energy, right? And when we talk about what trauma actually is, uh, you'll understand because our culture, especially Western culture is really a very traumatizing culture. It causes trauma. Um, and it not only causes trauma, but it keeps the trauma still embodied in us, right? It's not a culture that teaches us how to heal trauma. It's a culture that traumatizes us and keeps us in that trauma. So um, this conversation and what we're going to be talking about today is going to be a little different from what you're used to hearing and what you're um, probably even been taught. And um, that's okay because we're not taught the things, we're not taught the actual truths of ourselves as souls. We're not taught the truths of ourselves as energetic and vibrational beings. We're not really taught that. We're not taught the language of it. We're not taught how these things work. 
So that's why a lot of us don't manifest uh, really delicious lives on a more frequent and consistent basis. And that's why a lot of us um, are having hard times in the world, staying well and staying healthy, um, be- even though we really deserve that and not understanding why we get sick when we do get sick. So um, uh, so let's dive right into that, right? So understanding, one, that illness comes from um, us withholding us ourselves from the vibration of love for too long. S- another thing to understand is that you are literally the incarnation you're the physical incarnation of the vibration of love, which is source energy, which, you know, for lack of better words, is God energy or soul energy or creator energy. However you want to, however you understand that best or you use the term for that best, you are literally an incarnation of that energy. And so the more you embody that energy, the more you begin to, hey, everybody watching, I see you all saying hello. Um, The more you embody that energy and the more you begin to um, align yourself with that energy, the more you're going to be able to manifest things that you really want on a more consistent and frequent basis, the better the things in your life are going to work, Uh, like your relationships will be more fulfilling and they'll work well. Um, The money that you have will be more abundant and prosperous. Um, your peace of mind and your fulfillment with life will be will be higher. Your health of your body, all of that is tied into how much of the vibration of love you are embodying, how much of the vibration of who you really are you're embodying. And so those are some things to to understand. And then also nobody would withhold themselves from the vibration of love intentionally. Right. We're either taught how to do that, we're, meaning we're socialized in it. Our cultures teach us how to do that. Um, or we're traumatized into, into doing that. And that's what we're going to talk about pretty much today is the trauma. Um, and so when we, so understanding those, those things first will help you as we're going into this conversation. The other part of this is understanding what, um, the, the other kind of groundwork that I want to lay before we dive into this is understanding what trauma actually means, um, from your soul's perspective. So I've done a lot of videos talking about that, but I kind of want to just gloss over it really quickly because it's important to understand. So <clears throat> trauma, as we view it in our cultures, most cultures, especially in Western cultures, we view it as um, some type of event, external event that happened to you um, that was horrific or tragic, uh, that changed you, um, that either diminished your viewpoint or... Um, you're feeling about yourself in some way, right? So it may be some type of horrific event like uh, a tragic loss. You may have lost someone in your family or lost somebody very close to you. Uh, You may have lost a limb, uh, like you may have gotten an accident and lost an arm or lost a leg. Um, uh, So some type of tragic loss, also some type of um, horrific event like an abuse. So you may have been sexually abused or um, physically abused or emotionally abused in a family some type of way or by somebody else. Um, Or, you know, you may have had something happen to you and you may have become homeless or um, lost a family member or something like that, right? And so that, from in, in the Western viewpoint, we view that particular thing, the event, as the trauma. To the soul, though, the is a very the soul views trauma very differently and it views it really if you look at um the root word of trauma it's the greek word and that greek word which is the root word of trauma actually means wound so from the soul what is the wound right what is the wound you're carrying and like a physical wound is something that is an injury that you have or a hurt that you have that continues um, if it's not healed, it conti- it gets infected and continues to get worse and it continues to bleed and affect the rest of the areas of the body, right? So it affects the whole of you and not just a specific area. So if you look at that from the soul's perspective, what is the actual wound? From the soul's perspective, the event that happened to you is not the wound. That may have been, to the soul's perspective, that is the thing that may have caused the wound. Right. That may have led to that wound happening within you, but that's not the wound from the soul's perspective. 
the wound actually is. So the trauma or the wound actually is how that event made you feel about yourself and the beliefs it made you hold about yourself in the world around you. And the wound actually is the beliefs that you hold and how you begin to feel becomes disconnected from the truth of yourself, from the divine truth, divine meaning the God truth of you, right? And so from that perspective, what does that mean, right? So the truth of you is um, that there's nothing wrong with you, that you're worth. So there are three major truths. So there, there are several truths of the soul, but there are really three that are at like the foundational truths. Like if you can, if you can withhold these, if you can embody these, and if your consciousness, if the beliefs you hold in your consciousness are in alignment with these, then you're going to embody more of the energy of love because you're going to be in alignment with who you really are. Um, and so the three major ones, and this is what trauma, when we have trauma, we get disconnected from these three usually. The first one is uh, the belief, the understanding and the truth of the soul that we get disconnected from when we have trauma is that um, that you're enough and that you're worthy and that nothing's wrong with you. Right. That is the soul truth. So when I had my near death experience, this was like um, and I was I was shown some things. And one of the things I was shown and told in my near death experience is kind of not like a um, it's hard really to explain the, the experience because it's, there's no there are two things that the non-physical world operates in, which is when you have a near death experience, you connect, you, you go over into the non-physical plane. Two things that they operate in that we don't operate in here on the fit when we're human um, is there's no linear time in non-physical. We have linear time. There's no linear time over there. So everything is kind of happening at once. Right. So we we perceive things as like past, present, future um, and the non-physical is all present. Everything's happening now like your past, your present, your future. And it's kind of hard to explain. I have to do a whole nother video to go into that, but it's kind of all happening now. The other thing is there's the, there's not kind of like audible words because again, it's not physical. So there's no like mouths, like you don't have a mouth to speak kind of. So even though you may visually see a person as looking like this, there's not, you're in, you're not physical. The end it was more energetic. So it used to, the conversation is not like somebody physically said anything to me. It was more telepathically. It was more just you think something and they know it and they think something and you know it and you and you feel it in your body. It's very different. So anyway, I had to say all that before I go on a whole nother tangent about um, the non-physical dimension and all of that. But one of the things that was that the conversation that I had was about how um we the one the truth of our being is there's nothing wrong with us that we are always and always enough no matter what happened to us no matter who we are no matter what our sexuality is no matter what our color is no matter what our identity is we are the embodiment of god we are literally it and so there's nothing wrong with us and we've just made we've just been made to believe that there was and that was one of the main reasons why um uh and i'll share a lot about my my journey here but um that was one of the main reasons why I had developed the sicknesses that I did and the disease that I did is because I was made to believe through some of the events that happened to me in my childhood that there was something deeply wrong with me. And I carried a lot of shame and that shame disconnected me from the energy of love. And so um, that shame was what what had kept me from feeling lovable and feeling the energy of being enough, right? And so that is, so that's one of the major truths. The first truth is that there's nothing wrong with you. You are worthy and enough just as you are always. You don't need to do anything to be enough. You don't need to do anything different. You don't need to get different degrees or different levels of money or have a certain body type or anything. You are enough and lovable just as you are for the rest of your life. For the rest of eternity, whether you do something differently or not, whether you lose the weight or you don't, whether you gain the weight or you don't, whether you get more money or you don't, whether you get that career, you are enough and you already deserve. You already do. Right. So that's the first thing. So when we get traumatized, 
So one of the things that happens sometimes when you get traumatized is you get disconnected from that truth and you start to believe that something's wrong with you. You believe that as you are, just as you stand in your, um, just as you stand in your sexuality, just as you stand as your, in the personality that you have, the identity that you have, your body, you know, how your body looks, whether it's the color of your body or the gender of your body, like male or female or trans or non-binary or whatever that is, uh, at whatever you feel, whatever your identity is around that. Um, Whatever, you know, it is, you start to feel like something about you as you are is not enough and something's wrong with you. And um, you need to either fix that something is wrong. So when you start to believe that, you believe you need to fix yourself some type of way or you need to suppress yourself so people don't find out about it or um, you need to change. Right. You need to change in order to be enough. In order to be lovable, in order for something not to be wrong with you, you need to change yourself. That's the trauma. That's one of the traumas, right? One of the unhealed traumas becomes you believe something's wrong with you. And if you don't heal that, if you don't heal that, and what healing is, by the way, all healing, whatever it is, whatever you're healing from, whether you're healing from something emotionally or you're healing from something physically or you're healing from something financially, whatever it is, the process, all the process of healing is the same. Healing at its core is about returning yourself to the vibration of love because love, the inner, the vibration of love is what heals everything. Um, now, I want to take some time here really quickly too, to, because a lot of times, especially if you're new to me and you're hearing the word love, there's a lot of misunderstandings about what love is. And this is another thing I learned um, in my near-death experience, also in the my healing journey that followed my near-death experience. I had a lot of mystical experiences that followed that. Um, my intuitive gifts began to open up. I began to channel. Um, and I've had a lot of conversations and experiences that really dealt with my understanding of what love really is. What we think about, because this is kind of what we're taught in our culture, when we think about love and you hear the word love, what most of us think about is affection. We think about some form of affection. So we think about um, appreciation or acceptance um, and or, you know, some type of uh, somebody when we say somebody loves you, what we usually think about is they accept you and they appreciate you or they care for you or they're compassionate towards you in some type of form. And while those are aspects of love, right? So appreciation and, and acceptance are literally foundational aspects of love. When you have those, then all the rest of the house of love can is easily built upon that. And you can experience that. So that's the kind of the foundation of love, but it's not the fullness of love. Love is a multifaceted vibration. It's, a, it's an energy. It's a, it, so it's more than an action, it's an energy. Right. And so an energy really translates to emotional feeling. Um, if you if you, you know, vibration, I speak a lot about vibration and what vibration and energy really translates to uh, in human terms is an emotional feeling. Um, it's more than that. Right. Because it's literally a frequency that creates. But that's another conversation just for this conversation. Just when we're talking about vibration and energy, you can really understand it as an emotional feeling. So um, love is multifaceted. So it doesn't, it's not just the feeling of appreciation and acceptance. It's also the feeling of ease. It's also, and when you talk to a lot of people who've had near-death experiences, they talk about feeling love beyond anything they've understood and how it's so much bigger than anything that we've understood, than we've talked about or we've understood or that anything bigger than they felt in the world before. And one of the reasons is they're feeling the totality of it. They're feeling the many facets of it. And most of us have been associate love with acceptance and appreciation and don't understand that it is bigger than that. It's way bigger than that. It is that. That is definitely an aspect of it. That is definitely a piece of the vibration of love. And you'll see, um, you know, when we talk about healing trauma here in a second, you'll see that a part of healing that trauma, your trauma may be around not feeling accepted and appreciated. So the part of love that you need to embody more in order to heal yourself and heal that trauma is to feel more appreciation and acceptance. That is getting more of the um, energy of love in your body, right? But 
But that's not the only energy of love. That's not the only facet of love. So another facet of love is ease. Another facet of love, the energy of love, which it is, is freedom. You'll also hear a lot of people who who cross over into the other side talk about how um, what the, the feeling that they most associated with love was the feeling of freedom. That was what it was to them. That's what it felt like on the other side. But ease and freedom are two aspects of the you know, of the vibration of love. Another one that um, and uh, of love, another facet of love that's often not talked about enough is joy. Joy is an is actually love. It's the energy of love. Um, and then another one is safety and empowerment. So, so those are the other two. So if you think about safety and empowerment, and if you really think about this, you can understand this. You can actually feel into this. If you think about somebody that um, who you feel loved by, you feel love. You feel a lot of love for this person, right? And you, uh, or you feel love when you're with them, or you feel love for them. You think about it. When you love somebody, you feel at ease around them and with them. You feel free with them. Right. You feel you feel a sense of freedom. You don't feel bondage by them. You don't feel imprisoned by them. Um, if you're in love with if you feel love with somebody, you feel accepted by them. Right. You don't feel like they're trying to change you. You feel like when you most feel the energy of love somebody, that's somebody who accepts your being. I usually say, think about your best friend. Right. Your best friend may not be thin. They may not be rich. They may not be or they may be. But there's something about them that doesn't fit into um, societal like acceptance norms or whatever. But you love them. You accept it anyway. Right. They may have some quirks about them that some people don't like, but you you love you accept it. Acceptance. Right. Is part of love. Appreciation. Like you see the positive aspects in somebody. You see the value of them. Right. When you love somebody, you see all their positive aspects um, and you, you, you empower you feel empowered when you feel loved by somebody. You feel in your in your power, in your center. You don't feel disempowered or disenfranchised um, when you're when you're lo- when you feel loved by somebody. So this is all like these are all facets of love. <clears throat> so, um, so when we get traumatized in some way, we get disconnected from from different facets of that. Some of if you're if you have deep, deep, deep trauma, you may be disconnected from all those facets in some form. Um, but usually you're disconnected from a few of those facets. When we feel like something is wrong with us, one of the facets that we get disconnected from of love is we get disconnected from the facet of appreciation and acceptance. So we usually don't appreciate ourselves how as we are just as we are we usually will only appreciate ourselves if we fit into the box that we think um is acceptable and is enough that we've been made to think that so using myself for an example um also trauma can come this disconnection from the truth of yourself doesn't have to come through a major life event like the things we talked about in the beginning which is the usual definition of Uh, the Western definition of trauma. Trauma can come from a small event. It can come in the most loving of families. It can come in the most supportive of families. You can still get traumatized. And like, for instance, my trauma that I had was around, and again, well, I'm going to go through the different truths and the different traumas here in a second. We just went through one. We got two more to go. But my trauma, one of my main traumas was around feeling something was wrong with me. And it was primary in two areas. The first area was I felt something was wrong with my body. I was a I was a bigger kid growing up. And so I was made to feel like I was um, I was called fat and um, was teased a lot. Um, uh, chunky. It was called chunky a lot um, and was made to feel like. Um, because my body was not thin and looked like everybody else's in my peer group. Uh, that, and, and again, I wasn't even uh, looking back. I wasn't an obese child. I was just probably just slightly bigger than the rest of my peers, but, um, I was made to feel like my body was unlovable and unlikable and that it was unattractive as it was. And so I began to hold shame. And so when we get disconnected from the truth of ourselves that we're enough, what begins to happen is we begin to hold shame. 
And shame is one of the biggest energies that disconnects you. It's kind of, it's a resistant energy. So it's, it's a big, when we have a belief about ourselves that causes shame, that withholds love from us in a big way. You cannot hold shame in your, in your body and have the, the, and have the energy of love be in the same place. Shame repels love. So it's kind of like, a, like the light. Right. So there's light shining down on me. And if I was to put something like in the way of a light, right, it would kind of have a shadow here. Right. If I put if I if I put, you know, my hand or something in front of the lights that are here, it's, it will cast a shadow. Right. That's that's literally how what happens here. So love is the light. And when we begin to think shame, that is a resistor to the light. It blocks the light from shining in our lives and blocks light from coming into our bodies. So, and again, our bodies, our bodies need the light to be healthy. They really do. They need as much light as possible to be healthy. And so when we have shame and we hold shame for a long time, that begins to withhold the light from coming into our, the light of love from coming into our bodies. And that's the cause of a lot of illnesses. We think it's about, if we think it's about this bacteria over here, or you didn't do this diet over here, or you didn't eat this organic foods well, or you weren't vegan enough. And while diet and toxins in the food and all that can affect your, the health of your body, if you looked at it and if you looked at it from the broader perspective, the percentage of what's happening externally what's causing illness is like 1%. The 99%, the other 99, the biggest root of it is that you are being withhold, you are withholding yourself from the energy that your body needs to stay well. And shame is one of the ways in which we, in which the energy is withheld from us. When we have shame in our consciousness, we have shame in our belief systems and then we feel shame in our bodies. You can't have love. You can't. You're withholding yourself from the energy of love. And the body is not created to be without the energy of love within it for a long time and stay healthy. It cannot. So I had felt went many years, many years holding shame. That The first area I felt it was about the shape of my body. Right. The second place I felt shame was about my sexuality. I was made to believe that being attracted to the same gender meant something was wrong with you and that it was a it was an, unho an unholy thing and um, you were hell bound. And um, in my culture, you were made to feel like you were dirty and something you were the unwanted. And so I hid that, you know, when I realized that I was attracted to the same gender, I realized I realized that at five years old. And since that very moment that I realized it, I began to feel shame around it and I began to feel scared and I suppressed myself. Right. And again, that's one of the things that happens when you have shame and you feel like something's wrong with you. You will try to again, you will either try to hide it. So you'll suppress it and try to hide it so nobody finds out about it because the belief is. Uh, it is a protection. It's a protection and a defense mechanism. You're trying to defend yourself from being harmed. So you hide and you hide so that nobody finds out because if they find out, they're going to touch that wound and that wound's going to hurt. They're going to make you feel like something's wrong with you or they may reject you or they may withhold more love from you, which is, again, what you want. You want to feel loved and lovable. And if you feel like something's wrong with you, then you feel like that that wrong thing is going to keep love from you. So you'll hide it so that you can stay loved or you'll try to change it. Right. You'll try to. And that's another thing I did. I hid it. And then I tried to act like I tried to change it. I tried to be as heterosexual as I possibly could. Right. And and um, but it wasn't me. And so suppression keeps you imprisoned. So you're withholding yourself in two. two there's, so then you start withholding love from yourself in two ways. You withhold acceptance and appreciation. So you don't appreciate yourself as you are. So I didn't appreciate my body as it looked, right? And I didn't appreciate my sexuality as it was because I thought it was I was made to believe it was unholy and wrong and dirty. And so acceptance and appreciation, I was withholding my love from that. And then I was also withholding myself from the from the part of love, which is freedom, because I began to suppress my natural self. I began to hide and suppress and try and change, which led me to the feeling of imprisonment and bondage. 
because I was always hiding. I was could never fully be myself for fear that if they found out I was murdered, really attracted to the same gender, then I would be, you know, demonized. As well as, you know, I had um, my psychic and intuitive gifts op were some of them, some of them opened when I was young. And so my belief and understanding about the world, especially the spirit world, was different from my traditional Christian upbringing. So I hid that as well because I didn't want to be seen like I was very sinful and I didn't want to be ostracized and punished, which is what I thought I would do because that's what in my culture growing up, if you didn't believe the way everybody else believed, um, and if you didn't, you know, totally agree with what was being taught to you, um, there was something wrong with you and you're going to be punished. So I hid that. And the thing about hiding is it makes you, it put, it, it, it feels like a prison. You put yourself in a prison and you don't, it's impossible to hide and to suppress something about yourself and to feel free at the same time. So I was withholding myself from love in, in those, I was withholding myself from love three in three areas, no appreciation, no acceptance, no freedom. Right. So that's the first, that's, that's the first, um, heal trauma. And I see a lot of you all commenting here. So yeah, Leslie's saying, I am enough. I am worthy. There's nothing wrong with me. That is the first divine truth. That is the first one. And it is, again, that is true all across your life for the, all of your lifetime, no matter what happens to you, that truth never becomes false. It is always true for you. Um, but that's what we get disconnected from when we become traumatized. We believe some things were not enough some type of way. For me, my body wasn't enough and my identity, my sexuality wasn't enough. Um, I'm worthy and there's nothing wrong with me. Um, Judy says, yeah, I know I've been there, loved it. Past, present, future, all knowing all at the same time. I didn't remember a lot though. Yeah, um, that's the thing about the non-physical. It's non-linear. And... Um, the other thing I, the other thing I found about my near death experience is my near death experience happened almost 15 years ago. It happened in 2005. So, um, the, the one that where I had this conversation in the non-physical, um, that happened in 2005 and I'm still remembering things about it to this day, <laughs> to this day, there are things I'm like, Oh wait, that actually happened. Um, or, oh yeah, I forgot, I forgot this and this is happening. I still, I still get new awarenesses from it to this day, 15 years later. So yeah, it's, it's really a, um, it's really powerful. Um, now oh, Valerie is saying you are the perfect born day gift. Spirit has let me here today for this. Happy birthday, Valerie. Happy born day. I hope, um, somehow, I hope something in this actually is serving you well. So that's the first one. That's the first trauma. Uh, that, that, that's the first divine truth that we get separated from when we're traumatized. And that's how that leads to illness, right? We begin to hold shame in our bodies when we don't feel enough. And shame disconnects us from love because it makes us, it, we, we can't appreciate ourselves fully and unconditionally, right? We only can appreciate ourselves if we suppress that thing we think is wrong or we change it or we fix it some type of way. Um, and we don't accept ourselves unconditionally. We only accept ourselves if we fit inside of the conditions which we think are no longer wrong. And then we also, we, since you try to suppress when you feel like you're not enough and you have shame, you never feel free. And freedom is an aspect of love. The second thing is um, that you are safe in this world. And that this world is a safe place to be in. So that's the second divine truth. Now the soul knows that this world is a great place to be in. This world is um, not just that it's a great place to be in because the physical world, why souls... I, I used to get this question a lot when I used to do readings primarily when I was doing work as a, as an intuitive and a psychic, I used to get this question a lot. Um, why, like, why am I here? Why would my soul choose to come here? Why have I not learned my lesson? I want to hurry up and get through with this lifetime and graduate so I don't have to come back here. And here's something that I really want to speak to because there's a big misunderstanding around that. One, the soul only chooses, makes its choices. Whatever choice it is, whatever it decides to do, whatever its intentions are, 
the soul, which is the bigger, higher God part of us, the non-physical part of us, there's two parts of us, really. There's the part that you see, which is the physical part. And if you look, if you think about it as an iceberg, that's the tip of the iceberg. That's the part that you can see. But it's just, it's such a small part, just like iceberg. The biggest part of the iceberg is underneath the water. It's unseen and it's huge. That part is huge, way bigger than the little part that you see, yeah, right, like up top. It's the biggest part and it's unseen. This physical part of you is the smallest part of you. The biggest part of you is the non-physical part. It's the energy part of you. Right. It's the soul part of you, the, the part of you that lives eternally, the part of you that is connected to everything. It's the, it's the God part of you. And that part of you only makes decisions out of joy. This is something, again, that I really want to I'll have to do a whole nother video on because I want to go very deep into this at some point, because this is very important to understand that part of us. The soul part of us, which is the part that we made the decision to become this physical life from, right? We decided to become physical and have an experience as this physical life from that perspective. That perspective only ever makes decisions out of joy because it really wants that experience because it believes that experience is going to be fun and going to be very expensive. It's going to enhance joy. And it, it does that from um, a space of feeling uh, joy. It doesn't make it out of fear. It doesn't make it out of obligation. It doesn't make it out of responsibility. It only, the soul only ever makes decisions out of joy. So you made a decision to be here because you really wanted to be here because you thought it was going to be fun and it was going to be the best blast of a decision you could have ever made. So that's the first thing to understand. The second thing to understand is the soul understands that this life, that the entirety of the world is a reflection of you. There's nothing going on here but you. I've done a lot of, I've talked a lot about how your reality is, a, is only a reflection and only a manifestation. Your external reality is only a manifestation and a reflection of your internal reality. Your vibration, meaning the, the beliefs that you hold and the habitual feelings that you have right? It's a reflection of that. And that so your soul know that I'm going to come here and I'm going to create a world that everything that I see and everything that I experience is going to be my creation. So I'm literally, it's a safe place to be because it's only if I'm, whatever I'm experiencing is only happening because of me. And so if I don't feel safe in the world, if, if I'm having experiences in the world where I'm feeling attacked or I'm feeling victimized or I'm feeling um, like the world is not safe. It's not because the world is not safe. It's because I believe I'm not safe and I feel unsafe in the world and I feel disempowered and I'm creating an, a life in the world around me that makes me feel more like that. And if I don't want to feel like that anymore, if I don't want that experience, all I have to do is not feel like that. I have to do what I can to feel safe to feel empowered, to feel like this world is a fun place to be, and it becomes that. It it must. This is how this is how reality works. Again, this is stuff we're not taught in schools, but this is literally how reality works. Your reality is only ever a reflection, a direct mirror reflection of your internal world, how you feel about yourself and how and what you believe about the world around you. So when your soul came into this life, it knew that this life was a safe place to be. It didn't it knew that this was not the you didn't come into the fixer upper world. This world is prime real estate. This world can be whatever you want it to be. It can be as joyous and delicious and miraculous and mystical as you want it to be. Or it could be as um, vicious and as scary and as unsafe as you want it to be. Or, you know, and all of that is based upon what's going on here. It's only this is your filter. The only thing that is pouring out into the creation of the world is God energy. And but it's got to be filtered through your internal world, through what you, you your belief systems and, and your vibration, how you feel about yourself and how you feel about the world. That's your filter. It's just like, you know, I got this bottle of water here. Right. So if. Um, I was pouring, if I had a filter and if I had a cup right here, 
and I was I had a filter on top of the cup and I was pouring water into I wanted to drink some water, right? And I was pouring this bottle into this cup, through this filter into this cup. And then um I took the water, I took the cup and I drank the water and I was like This is nasty. This doesn't taste like water. This, this tastes like soot and, and dirt and and grease. What is what is this? There's something that must be wrong with the water. I'm looking and say there's something that must be wrong with the water. And it's like, no, this is pure water. It's only ever pure water in here. There's nothing else but water. The problem is not the water, and the problem is not the cup either. The problem is, oh my God, there's something in the filter. And you look at the filter and the filter has grease and dirt in it. So, of course, the water is going to be filtered through that. And what comes into the cup is going to be dirty water. The cup represents your life. It represents your reality. The water is the energy that's poured through you to create the world. You, the filter represents your consciousness and your vibration. So if you're getting, if, if what you're getting is not pure water, pure God, pure, pure love, remember it's love energy. So that's all that's being poured through you. That's all that's being offered to you. That's all, there's no other source. There's no source of darkness. There's no source of evil. It only, only the everything that's poured through you is love energy and it gets distorted, right? And so the manifestation that you experience in your life, what is a distortion of love energy? And it's based upon what your filter is. And the thing is not to try and um, try and fix your reality, try to try fix reality. It's trying to, the thing to do is to heal and clean your filter, to clean your filter. And one way we our filters get dirty is trauma, right? And so one of the ways it gets dirty is if you believe something's wrong with you, right? And you believe something's wrong with you, then you're going to manifest a life that makes you feel like something's wrong with you. You're going to manifest, you're going to attract partners and relationships that make you feel like something's wrong with you, right? I was always attracting people, always attracting guys who made me feel like eventually like um, I was too fat, like something was wrong with my body. Like I'd be really cute. I mean, I remember several, several of the people I dated even said this to me, like, You'd be so sexy. You'd be really, really cute if you just lost a few pounds. And it wasn't, again, I, could, I, I used to try and change my reality, right? Try to change the cup, try to get a whole new cup. So I get, I leave that relationship, get a new guy, right? Same thing. Eventually, he, he'd say something about my weight. He'd mention like, some, it'd make me feel like I wasn't, it wasn't, my weight was, my, my body size wasn't enough. Get a new guy thinking, let me change this cup. Same situation, right? It Nothing changed in my relationships and in my life, right? So I was constantly, constantly attracting relationships, constantly having events and experiences happen in my life that made me feel like I wasn't enough as I was, particularly around my weight and my looks, right? I was constantly attracting people who were making me feel ashamed of my sexuality, right? And no matter what I did to try and change the outside world, it, it, it just, it was just same script, different cast, right? And nothing actually changed in that until I cleaned my filter, until I realized, oh, I believe that there's something wrong with me. And so that's what's getting manifested. And when I changed my beliefs and I changed how I felt about myself, I started to love my body and appreciate my body just as it was. Um, I started to feel and accept my sexuality and feel worthy in my sexuality. I feel like nothing was wrong with it. My whole world began to change. And it wasn't that I changed, tried to change anything out there. Everything began to miraculously and magically change on its own. Right? You have to clean the filter. So when you heal that trauma, that's what, that's what healing is. Remember, it's a return to love. So when I changed, when I brought my beliefs about myself, and uh, back into love, back into appreciation and acceptance, I began to attract people who appreciated and accepted me just as I am. I began to um, um, manifest, you know, 
and and again, so my body became sick because I was didn't have enough appreciation and acceptance in my life. What began to heal my body was when I began to appreciate and accept myself more and feel more lovable and worthy. And that energy alone began to heal me. Here's the thing about healing, you guys. Your body will heal itself on its own. It doesn't need your help. It really doesn't need your help as far as it doesn't need you to really typically to change your diet. You know, I'm not going to I'll talk about diet in a whole nother video, but it really doesn't need like you could eat dog food if you have the right. If you have love energy, if you have enough love energy in your body, you can eat dog food and still be healthy. You really can. It, but your body, if you give your body, if you fuel it with the energy that it needs, it will heal itself. It will heal itself from anything, but you've got to give it the right energy. And this is kind of what we're talking about. One of the things is this is how you give it the right energy. So if you feel like something's wrong with you, the right energy is going to be feeling like you're enough. Right. It's going to be appreciating and accepting yourself because that's what acceptance says. No matter how I am, I'm at peace and I'm OK with myself. Right. Appreciation is seeing the beauty and the positive aspects and the value in yourself as you are. Right. Freedom is is not feeling like there's you're suppressed or you're imprisoned anywhere. So, again, the second thing is feeling safe in the world. So a lot of times when we get traumatized, we believe that we're not safe. So you can feel like your race or your or your color is not safe in the world. So that a lot of people, especially that look like me, that are black, a lot of black people feel unsafe. We're made to believe we were made to believe we've experienced some type of trauma and our ancestors experienced trauma and passed that trauma down to believe that black is not a safe thing in the world. Right. Um, you may believe that woman. Right. Being a woman is not safe in the world. Um, you may just believe something may have happened to you where you were abused in some way. So you're made to feel like you your being your your selfness is not safe in the world. Right. And so. When you move around not feeling safe, then it's impossible for you to feel at ease. It's impossible for you to, and ease is, a, is an aspect of love. So, so when you don't feel safe in the world, you start to feel afraid. And fear is another thing that shadows the light of love, right? So I talked about that before, but it's another thing that shadows the light of love. So fear puts a shadow, it casts a shadow on love. It withholds love energy from you. So when you don't feel safe in the world, you move through the world with a lot of fear and that fear withholds your, the energy, the fuel your body needs for love. And if you have it for a long time, um, if you go around the, with the world worried and afraid for a long time, you're going to get sick. You're going to develop an illness. And that illness, again, that disease is not um because you didn't eat the right things or or even hereditary even per se we're going to talk about this really because it's not really um you don't necessarily pass uh, illnesses on what you pass on from family to family is vibration and the vibration is what causes the illness <laughs> so we'll talk about that in detail in another video but um what it really is is you've just been holding fear you've been afraid somehow and that fear has been withholding you from love. And the love is what your, the love energy is what your body needs to fuel itself to be well. So, um, that's the other thing that when we get traumatized some type of way that we, um, that causes the illness. That's why, why trauma is, is one of the other roots because it puts fear in your body. It puts one shame in or it puts fear in. And really fear is another degree. I mean, shame is another degree of fear. But um, you, you start to feel like you're not safe and you're always on edge and you're always trying to protect yourself and you're stressed out. And scientifically, even the more stress you feel, and the more fear you feel, you literally send your body into uh, the fight, flight or freeze syndrome, which floods your body with cortisol and adrenaline, which are stress hormones. And when those hormones are flooded in your system, and you can research, this is just science, right? This is literally science. When your body is flooded with those hormones of adrenaline and um, uh, cortisol, which are stress hormones, it suppresses the body's ability to heal itself. It suppresses the body's um, balancing mechanisms. 
uh, and it begins to to deteriorate the organs. So a lot of a lot of illness becomes it's from fear. And again, fear keeps the energy from love happening because you never you don't feel at ease. You don't feel safe, which are two aspects of the of the vibration of love, ease and safety. Those are two parts of love, the energy of love. Um, so that's the second truth that you did get disconnected from. That's the trauma. So again, the trauma is not the thing that happened. The trauma is I no longer feel safe. I don't believe I'm safe in the world. And I don't believe that this world is a safe place to be, especially to be all of myself. Right. And that is, is opposite of what your soul knows as the truth and how your soul feels. The biggest part of you feels like you're safe. And that this world is a safe place to be. And it's especially safe to be all of yourself in. So you're disconnected from the largest piece of yourself when you don't feel safe in the world. You're literally, remember the iceberg? You remember the the, the iceberg? The, it's the tip of the iceberg is what you see. But the biggest part of you is the non-physical part of you. When you get disconnected from the feeling of safety, you just get, get disconnected from the larger piece of yourself. And so you can't, of course you can't be healthy because you're not even connected to the full piece of yourself. So healing, the process of healing is to heal the, the beliefs within you, the parts of you that don't feel safe. It's to become, to do what you can to change your belief system and to change your feelings to where you feel safe so that you can feel more at ease. You can relax and, and trust more in life and yourself. And you can feel more at ease and more safe. And the more safe you feel, the more you're going to give yourself the, your, the energy you need for your body to heal itself. Right. Feeling safe is a big one. I've, I, again, my work is to work with people. A large part of my work is to work with people to heal themselves. I work. My work is to help people heal themselves, to help people transform their lives into something more delicious than what they're currently experiencing and to help people manifest um, their deepest desires, like their truest desires. That's my work. And to, and to help you do that through the path of self-love. That's why you see on my little video here, it says self-love your way there. What I have come to know is self-love, loving ourselves is the path to healing whatever we need to heal, to positively transforming whatever we want to transform in our lives, and to manifesting whatever we desire to manifest. Loving ourselves more is the key to all of that. So the more safe you feel and the more at ease you feel when you have previously been made to feel unsafe in the world and to believe that this world is not safe and that you're not safe, the more you change those beliefs and the more you start to feel safe, you'll start to see things start to heal in your life and in your body, right? And um, and then the third one, because I know we're coming up on the hour, so I'm going to wrap up uh, quickly here. So if you have any questions, I know some of you have comments, but if you're still watching and you have a question, please put that question in the comment and I'm going to get to those questions here in just a second. Um, the last major truth, so that again, there are three pillar divine truths of the soul that make up your, your, your truth that we usually get disconnected from when we're traumatized that, that leads to all dysfunction and, and all disease in the body. The last, the, the third truth is, um, that all of your needs will be met and it will be easy to meet them. Right? All of your needs will be met and it will be easy to meet them. So, your soul knows why this is the divine truth, right, about your being, is your soul knows that nothing is being withheld from you, that that everything that you desire, that good is always flowing to you. Remember when I, sh I talked about the, the water analogy with the, with the filter in the cup? The water is always flowing. It's always flowing to you. The good is always flowing to you. It's never being withheld from you. And this, and your soul also knows this is an ask and it's given universe. So that means that if you want something, if you desire something, it's given and it's given immediately because this is not, nothing's withheld from you. Love, you are loved. You are divinely loved. You are love itself. And so the very, the very, um, one of the very characteristics of love is that it gives, right? It gives and it receives. So you are always being given love. Your um, job is to open yourself to receive. And we close down our ability to receive when we, when we believe we're made to believe that our needs will not be met. And that it won't be easy to meet them. 
And so again, when you understand your soul knows this is an ask and it's given universe, the moment you ask for something is given and you don't have to ask with your mouth, you ask with your energy. So you ask like, if something happens to you, it automatically makes you prefer something, right? If something happens to you that is unwanted, it, some, you begin to understand what you begin to send a signal about what you prefer immediately, even if you don't audibly ask for it, right? If I go out, if I go out from this video right now and I walk and I fall down and I hit my knee and my knee hurts, the immediate thing is I want my knee not to hurt anymore. I want my knee to feel good. I don't want to hurt, right? So that's an immediate ask. Even if I don't say that out with my, my mouth, what I want is for my body to feel good and not to be in pain, right? So that the universe says, great, here it is, right? Here's the experience. The experience of your body not being in pain is flowing straight to you. Now I have to receive that. I have to allow myself to receive that because you have free will here in this reality. That's part of this non-physical reality. You have free will. So you can choose whether or not you want to receive something. You allow yourself to receive it. You don't get to choose whether or not it's given to you because it's always given, right? So the universe gives it. You, through your beliefs and your vibration, get to choose whether or not you're going to receive it. So when we have a belief system that says my needs won't be met, that the universe does not provide for me easily and that um, um, I am not worthy because that's really what I, my needs are not going to be met. That's kind of what's at the root of that. Because when you understand that you're worthy, you're already worthy unconditionally. That means everything is already being given to you. You don't have to do anything to deserve it. It's already given. So, um, and it will always be given, right? And so, when something happens to us, and again, most trauma happens in childhood. So um, when something happens to you, like your caregiving system um, wasn't as attentive, right? Um, they didn't give you the affection or the love or the safety that you desired and that you needed as a kid for some kind of way. It makes you believe that your needs are not going to be met, you know? And um, when you believe that, you start to move through the world not trusting, so again, you're, you're not at ease um, because you don't trust. You kind of become, um, you try to control everything when you believe it, when, when that's something that comes up, we develop a need to control things when we believe that our needs are not gonna be met because if we're not controlling it, then it's not gonna work out for us, right? That's the belief that kind of is underneath the, the control is if I'm not handling everything, and if, I, if it's not in my hands, then it's not gonna get done and uh, my need, a need is not gonna be met. Right. Um, so you start to control, which, again, stresses you out, which makes you not trust. So you're not at ease. You don't feel safe. Um, and um, you just you, you keep yourself from the energy of love and that and, and you and your own edge. You're stressed and you begin to be when you don't believe that your needs are going to be met. A lot of times what begins to happen is you take on more than you need to. You become overwhelmed. Um, you become kind of a type A personality that has to have everything in control, has to have a lot on their plate, has to be doing a lot. Um, and you burn yourself out. And so <clears throat> that's kind of another way, again, and that leads to illness and disease. If you do that for a long period of time, for a prolonged period of time, that leads to disease. And so um, this is how those unhealed traumas lead to disease in our lives. Right. When we believe that uh, just kind of wrapping it up here, when you believe that something's wrong with you, you begin to hold shame in your life and you begin to develop a pattern of always trying to fix yourself or suppress yourself, which leads you into not ever feeling free and ever feeling acceptance and appreciation, which are um, aspects of love. Uh, when we don't feel safe in the world, we begin to not feel at ease. Uh, we don't trust and we don't feel safe, right? So um, safety and ease are aspects of love. And so we withhold ourselves from that for too long. And uh, we withhold ourselves from love, which is the fuel our body needs. And eventually an illness is going to pop up um, that is going to be the indicator of that. Uh, and then the third one is when we don't feel like our needs are going to be met, right? Uh, we begin to try and control things, which stresses us out. 
Um, we move through the world with, again, not trusting. And so we don't feel at ease again. Um, and when you're trying to control things, also, you don't have freedom. You don't move through the world with freedom either. So, um, and you don't have joy, right? All of these also, when you feel like something's wrong with you, when you don't feel safe in the world, and when you don't feel like your needs are met, you also disconnect yourself from joy, which is another one of the aspects of love. Um, so this is how, why emotional trauma is the root of disease. This is how all of this happens. So when you feel all of that, um, and you, and it goes, it goes unhealed. It goes unhealed for a long time. Um, eventually your body's going to start to break down. And that's the why, that's the reason it's breaking down. It's because you've held too much shame in your life, too much shame in your body for a long time. You've held too much fear in your body for a long time. And then you've got stress in your body, right? Because of, of because of those fears and that shame. Uh, and that causes disease because you've been draining your body of the fuel it needs um, to run well, which is love energy. Your body needs the vibration of love to run well, just like your car needs gasoline to run. Or if you have an electric car, it needs electricity. <laughs> um, so that's the thing. And I see somebody saying abandonment issues. So abandonment issues are... Uh, again, the trauma of not feeling safe in the world, right? So at the root cause of abandonment is I'm going to be alone and not, I'm not safe, right? So, um, and I'm not going to be safe because as you think about as a kid, why, why is abandonment dangerous? Because as a young child, you need your caregivers around. You need them um, because as a young kid coming into this world, you don't have the physical capabilities to care for yourself, you don't have the capabilities to get food and to make it for yourself. You don't have the capabilities to buy a house for yourself and to provide shelter for yourself, you know, especially as a baby. Um, so abandonment is an issue because abandonment says I'm going to be alone and I'm not going to be safe and my needs are not going to be met. It's, it's those two things, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be safe and then my needs are not going to be met because if I'm alone, I can't meet my needs. So that's the fear, right? That's the fear around that. So the abandonment issues is really the issue of feeling safe in the world um, and feeling like your needs are going to be met. Um, and so last comment here, shame, fear, and stress. Yes, it's in, it's in me. I've worked so hard to heal these and not felt like I've gotten very far. So curious how, how you and others find true solutions and results. So um, a lot of times if you have this, then you work with somebody who is a skilled person um, that helps you do that. That's why That's why I'm here. That's my very work. I don't just do videos. I work with individuals. You can find out more information about how to work with me on that um, on my website. But that's what I do as an intuitive healer. I help people um, heal the trauma, the unchilled trauma. And I help people do that through learning how to love themselves more. That's my specific way. I believe that love heals everything. And the key to healing trauma is exactly what we're talking about. Since trauma is a disconnection from the truth of yourself, the key to healing trauma is to reconnect yourself to the truth of yourself. Is to begin to reconnect your, your consciousness, right? Your belief systems to the truth of your being and your vibration, which is, which is really how you feel, um, to realigning your vibration with the, your true vibration, how your soul feels, that heals everything. So um, I know tools and practices and rituals and exercises and, and principles and all that, which will help you do that. And that's when some when somebody comes to me to work with me one on one, that's what we do. Um, so uh, I know for a lot, learning to try and do that on your own is hard. And it can be challenging. It can take a long time. And that's why people like me exist out there in the world to kind of collapse the, the learning curve um, and to um, cut the time down and, and to help you, to, to offer you as a guide so you don't have to be on your own along that journey of doing that. My website is uh, JeromeBraggs.com, www.JeromeBraggs.com. If you want to book a session with me, you can do it directly on my website. You can go to the session section or work with me session. Or even if you just want to jump to that now, you go to JeromeBraggs.com slash sessions. JeromeBraggs.com slash sessions. You can book a session with me right there. Um, so, yeah. So, thank you all for watching. We've gone past the hour, so it's kind of time to wrap up. Um, 
And uh, just again, that's why um, I hope this has shed some light on helping you understand why in, uh, unhealed emotional trauma is the root of disease and how to go about healing that. Uh, I'll be speaking a lot more about this as time goes along. And again, um, put your questions in the comment box. I know I'm ending the live, but I do read them and they inspire future videos uh, in the future. So thank you all. I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful Sunday and go love yourselves however you can, um, whenever you can <laughs> go do it because loving ourselves is the key to the well-being we want in our lives and the wellness we want in our bodies and that we truly, truly deserve. Until next time, much love. Bye.